Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living and return worth having. Well, the best way to do that is to know your role. What is your role in your current occupation? What is that title of that position? So when someone says to you in a networking situation, what do you do for a living or what's your job or where are you employed, you know how to answer that. I'm an XYZ at ABC company and I help people buy. It's a pretty standard networking ploy. But what we're also talking about today is the importance of the rules that govern your job. The rules that govern your job says these are your boundaries. These are the rules of our industry, meaning the laws that govern us, such as sanitation or safety or quality or something like that. And these are the standard industry expectations because human beings have experienced your company or other companies like yours or people in your industries before. So they're expecting these kind of standard operating procedures to come out of you, to be displayed by you, to be performed by you in order for them to feel like they're getting a decent quality customer or consumer experience. When we talk about these things, it makes sense. It's common sense. But within the concepts of the rules of your job, there is a governance. And the question is, are you a basic employee? Are you a supervisor? Are you a manager? Are you a divisional manager? Are you a vice president or administrator, which is sort of interchangeable and sometimes different levels? Or are you an executive or a business owner? You see, the rules apply to that concept, too. If you're an hourly employee, then you better stay within the boundaries of your job. And the boundaries of your job are totally within the job description in front of you. Whether it's to stock shelves, whether it's to take in cash, whether it's to clean a shelf or clean a counter, whether it's to mop a floor, whether it's to sweep a floor, whether it's to serve food, it all has rules. But the actual parameters of your job in terms of who you govern, if it's just your self-leadership that you're responsible for, or whether you're actually responsible for leading a team within the doors of that business, is important. The actual responsibilities of the job that are articulated in terms of the accountabilities of the job are usually put in a very detailed job description. These are your job duties. This is what we're training you on how to do so everything looks right on the shelf, all the labels are forward, everything looks pretty. Whatever the hell it is, is your job. It is an expectation for your position in your particular career, in your particular profession, and in your particular industry. So, not too hard, right? But here's the dereliction of duty. When people take on their emotionalism into their work, meaning not just taking pride in doing a good job for their company, when they take their personal baggage, their personal telephone calls, their personal texting, their personal whatever into that job or in front of the consumers, then they've provided themselves a dereliction of duty problem. Because while you're on the job, you're supposed to be setting as best you can unless there's a lot of craziness and a lot of crisis going on at hand, you're supposed to be putting your personal life on hold while you serve in your professional life. And sometimes it's hard to do. I mean, a pregnant lady is obviously pregnant, so she's going to have those pregnant uh, issues going on for her throughout the day of her job until she goes on maternity leave. And in another case, we might have somebody who has a crisis with a child and they're really worried about it and they're trying to figure out what to do about it. So they might socialize with the people that they care about the most or they trust the most on their job who might also have children and might have been through some hell too and might want to do that when they're literally stocking shelves because it's something social to do while they do their job. And most companies are okay with that because we fraternize, we socialize usually with the people we work with. Or we make the choice of never to do that because you don't get your honey or you get your money unless you're married to it. Now, we've kind of explained the simplicity and the common sense of that. But in life, we have to figure out what it is we are responsible for. What we're responsible for is our company's brand and reputation. What we are responsible for is marketing our company in a way exactly the same every day to every consumer that walks through the door. 
It is absolute truth that you will be a performer of something in that job. But at the same time, you are performing the marketing and publicity of your profession and your organization and your boss and the owner of that business. So as we take that into account, how does that change your position? How does that change what you do in your living? How does that change how you represent you? Because not only are you representing you, you're representing your profession, you're representing your boss, you're representing the company owner who could fire you at will for a dereliction of your duty, but you're also representing, as we said before, you. But here's what also gets represented. Your family gets represented. Your family of choice, or your family of origin, or both, or sometimes the entire heritage and culture and race and nationality of you. No pressure. You see, people do make those comments. People do make those experiences. People do say those things about you. We make decisions about where we invest our money on a daily basis. And if you're a shitbag in your company, if you're lazy in your job, you will probably cost your company a lot of dough over time. Because the goal of every company is to do what? To make and earn consumers, customers every day. And you will have the A clients, the B clients, and the C clients. The A clients come every day, multiple times a day, because it's a part of their life. It's a part of their stay. It's a part of their world. The B clients may only come a couple times a week. The C clients may come once a week or a couple times a month, and you get the gist. But that's how you keep the growth of your company going. It's also how you keep your salary, and it's also how you keep the possibility of incremental uh, increases in your earnings at the end of the year or at the quarter, or however that's handled within your organization. So when I talk about these things, do these things make sense? Of course they do, because it's real life. But if you're not remembering that every single day, then you need to put some sort of sign on your bathroom mirror that reminds you of your day. That you made a choice of where you choose to work. You made a choice for that salary. You made a choice for that level of education. You made a choice for that certification. You made a choice of how you represent your family. And you made a choice about how you represent your entire culture, history, and heritage of you. And once you do that on a daily basis, once you remind yourself of how to listen to people, once you remind yourself of the whole purpose of your job, no matter what your industry or profession or career looks like or is going to be, is to keep, maintain, and earn, basically, consumers, then you figured out the rules of life. But if you don't like your job, if you don't like your fellow employees, if you don't like your coworkers, then you did a horrible job in evaluators, waiting where to go to be employed. And that's on you.